So Ohio was the first major test of Trump's influence. There have been, we should point out, some other races since he left office, and he has a more mixed record when it comes to those. But major, major test in the 2022 midterms he passed. There's still more uh, than a half dozen races coming up uh, with Trump-endorsed candidates in Nebraska, in North Carolina, in Pennsylvania, in Idaho, and Georgia. Do you think all of them are going to be as successful as J.D. Vance? I don't know that all of them will be. I think certainly this is good news for President Trump if he wanted to disrupt this narrative that maybe his endorsements don't mean that much. Mm -hmm. J.D. Vance really does have to thank Donald Trump oh, yeah. for, for elevating him yeah. in, that, in that primary. But it doesn't mean that Dr. Oz is going to have an easy path to victory in Pennsylvania. It doesn't mean that Brian Kemp is suddenly in massive jeopardy in Georgia, that there are a lot of places where the president's influence remains more limited. And frankly, you know, you can look at this glass half full if you're a Trump supporter and say, hey, he clearly got Vance to the front in that pack. But the other way to look at it is almost seven in 10 Ohio Republican primary voters did not listen right. to Donald Trump's endorsement. So, I mean, there's a way you can spin this to both say that Trump has a lot of influence and to say that his influence so, is limited. So he's good for 33 percent of the vote <laughs> in a state right. in, in which he did very well in Ohio. So in a crowded field, of course, that makes a large difference. But what will it be in a governor's race, uh, for example? You know, you mentioned Kemp versus Purdue. His candidate, Purdue, is not doing too well in the polls right now. So I think it's glass half full, half empty. As you point out, you can, you can analyze it any way you want it. He's point. going to face uh, Tim Ryan, uh, the House Democrat, in the Senate race in Ohio. Uh, he is saying, uh, J.D. Vance says that Tim Ryan is trying to be a Trump Democrat. Uh, here's what Ryan had to say about that. Take a listen. I'm an American. Look, I agreed with Donald Trump on, on China, uh, on other, uh, a few other issues, but, you know, and I've disagreed with Democrats on stuff, you know, obviously ran against Nancy Pelosi, got in fights with Bernie Sanders, disagreed with Obama on TPP. I think that's what the American people want. I I'm representing the exhausted majority here. And the exhausted majority wants to stop the Washington, D.C. food fight. They want us to start working together. What do you think? I mean, I think he's doing what he needs to do to win in a state like Ohio. And he's not unlike a lot of vulnerable U.S. senators. Well, vulnerable candidates for U.S. Senate in swing states and states that you can't go too far to the left and states where, you know, being perceived as too aligned with Nancy Pelosi might not win you the votes you need. So... Again, I think he's, like any other candidate, doing what he says he needs to do to connect with voters. It's still going to be difficult because Ohio is a state that right now is trending red. It's very red. It's a very red state. But we should point out the other senator in Ohio is Sherrod Brown, who's mm -hmm. one of the most progressive Democrats in the Senate. Right. And that's why I think, to your point, he is saying, um, Ryan is saying what he, needs, what he needs to say in order to appeal to his voters. But I think one other thing that he can point out is the issue with J.D. Vance about how we were talking about it earlier. He used to be a commentator on this network. He was very anti-Trump. He talked about Trump as being cultural heroin. He talked about Trump as leading the white working class down a very dark path. And he is now doing that. And so I think we're at a point where Tim Ryan can point out the pernicious nature of people who are not just endorsed by Donald Trump, but that who have left their values in the garbage to follow this man who has been so destructive to our country and our democracy. I, I do want to switch uh, just to talk about abortion for a section because of obviously that seismic story that Politico wrote yesterday, uh, where it looks as though the Supreme Court is poised to overturn Roe v. Wade uh, altogether. Um, there are a lot of Democrats convinced that this will be a major motivator for progressive voters, for Democratic voters, for women voters who are who support abortion rights. So there's at least one Democrat who disagrees. Uh, let's take a listen to Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia. Inflation is the number one driving factor, I believe, in my state. Right now it's hurting everybody, not just at the pump, but at the, uh, at the grocery store, at the drug store, at the pharmaceutical, everything they do. There's so many other serious issues. Now, now, look, Ma Manchin is not a supporter of abortion rights, right. but, do, do, I mean, is he wrong? I think we don't know yet. I don't want to be wishy-washy on this, but, <laughs> but I think that there are Democrats. I was talking to a Democratic pollster today, and he said to me, look, if the Democrats lean into what happened on abortion, if the Democrats lean into the so-called radical Republicans, and you've heard... The president talk about that a lot now. He talked about it today, yeah. Yeah, he, 
then, uh, and privacy, this question of privacy, um, he says, if the Democrat, this doesn't happen organically, mm -hmm. yeah. if candidates decide that they're going to lean into it, they can really take advantage of this with voters, not just suburban women. Yeah. But if they don't, that's it. And Tia, here's Vice President Kamala Harris at an event last night for Emily's List. You were there uh, covering it, uh, leaning into it, uh, as Gloria might say. Those Republican leaders who are trying to weaponize the use of the law against women, will we say, how dare they? How dare they tell a woman what she can do and cannot do with her own body? How dare they? How dare they try to stop her from determining her own future? We only have a minute left, and I want to get to all three of you, so <laughs> Yeah, I, I just want to say quickly that just because abortion may not be the number one issue that a woman might say she cares about most doesn't mean it can't drive turnout. Mm -hmm. It can't drive enthusiasm. And that's what Democrats know. That's Absolutely. what we saw in her speech. It's not just about number one. It's about what can get people to turn out and head to the polls. It's personal. And we're not just going to lean. These Democrats aren't just going to lean. They're tipping over on this because they know it's going to be a motivator. Polls have shown. They've asked the question, if Roe v. Wade is in danger of being overturned, are you more motivated to vote for Democrat? And the answer is, I think, either like two-thirds or three-fifths or some very high number. The answer is absolutely yes. And this goes for all demographics, women, men, Democrats, independents, Latinos, blacks, AAPI, so all across the board. What, what do the polls say? What do you think? I still think inflation is going to be the number one issue, but I think the asymmetric way in which this will motivate Democrats more than Republicans Anger and frustration mm -hmm. is more motivational than, oh, hey, we got what our side wanted. And so I can see this being sort of asymmetric in terms of who is motivated by the decision that the Supreme Court put Perhaps out. for the first time ever, because it usually works the other way around, right? right? It usually works that, that people who are motivated because they support abortion rights think, well, we have it, we're fine. Well, th I, th I like to think about this, like in 2018 around Kavanaugh, there was a, the conventional wisdom was that that was going to tick off a lot of voters and progressives were going to benefit from it. But it also ticked off a lot of Republicans. Right. And so you saw this kind of both sides getting very frustrated. I don't know that that's the same dynamic in this case. Very interesting. To be continued, we'll talk more about this coming up because obviously the issue is not going away. They still actually have to <laughs> issue right. their opinion. <laughs>